Hey guys, John Boston, Boston Style Racing. Today we have a 2017 Camaro ZL1 and uh, I'm going to remove the throttle body. I'm going to start by removing this boot here. I'm going to leave the intake alone because I just don't need to remove it. Uh, it appears that there's just uh, this clamp here, this clamp here, and this hose right there. So I'm going to remove those and uh, take this boot off and uh, get to the throttle body and we'll see what we can see. Alright, there's uh, one thing that I see a lot of people, even pros, doing, you know, with these clamps. It's got a screw. They try and take a flat bladed screwdriver and, you know, it slips off. You know, with one of these multi-tip things, you just pull that out, set that carefully down, and this will fit right over that. And no slipping, no hassles. I mean, why would you do it any other way? And uh, with this hose right here, it's just got a quick release. If you just push, push the back side of it, it's a light gray kind of thing. And then it'll just walk kind of gently back and forth. You don't want to break anything. And that one's free. Nothing to it. I'll stick it out of the way there. Okay, I'll get that other clamp and uh, pull that boot off. Okay, and the uh, boot, inlet boot came off with little trouble. Um, once it was all loosened up, it uh, came right off. And uh, it's got this little catch can in the bottom, you know. I'm guessing that's to uh, catch oil ingestion, but uh, so far I don't see any. That thing's empty, so that's a good sign. Now to get the throttle body itself off, there's just these four uh, bolts here and uh, the electrical connection. You can't see it, they place it on the bottom, but there's a little catch that just slides back. And then you're able to depress this and slide it off, we hope. Yeah, there we go. Nothing to it. Now just there's four bolts and that ought to come right off. Okay, yeah, the throttle body came off uh, with little difficulty. Uh, just the four 10 millimeter uh, bolts and uh, that electrical clip I told you about. Uh, and you can see here it's got a uh, pretty sharp little lip here. Big time lip. Uh, on the top, you know, it's got this lip for a purpose. You can see the blade just about seals against that point. You don't want to mess with that. Anywhere the blade is sealing, yeah, that's going to screw you up. Don't Don't touch it. Uh, but I can ease this transition all the way up to here pretty easily on both sides. And uh, then, on the back side, I'm not going to mess with much of this, because as you can see it seals here. You know, if you change that, you're going to change the airflow at idle, and uh, all of it will be a real downer. You'll be buying a new one. Uh, but I can uh, smooth this shaft down. I can half shaft this to gain some flow uh, right there. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, not going to be a lot of work involved, but, uh, yeah, we'll uh, ease this transition here, about half of it, maybe a little further, because, uh, yeah, the blade doesn't come into play until right at the very top, so we can mellow this out up quite a ways, and uh, then we'll half shaft the back of it, and uh, I'll uh, keep you updated as we go. Okay. We're uh, finished up here with this one. You can see I did uh, the edge all the way around. Just ease that a little bit. I didn't get it all knife edged or anything crazy. I just made it so the air isn't whacking into that and spinning around. And then I uh, took out this, uh, this little lip here. Just from there to there. And see as we get up near where it's sealing here. It was a bigger and bigger obvious lip. We didn't take that out. I just eased the edge a little bit, but not all the way up for sure. Nowhere near where it's sealing against the blade. And then it had another little lip here. See, and I, you can tell by uh, seeing these lines here. I didn't completely remove those. That was getting pretty thin there. I just wasn't willing to remove the amount of material there to take those and make them look completely smooth. They're, they're like, if you feel them, you can feel it, but you know, 
it's not a big deal. And then it's got this big ramp up into there anyway. So it's not like I was, you know, hogging it out to make the whole thing uh, 700 millimeter, you know. Nothing crazy like that. We're just uh, easing the airflow into this all the way around. And then the shaft in the back, see, meh, I don't know where you can see the best. But see how I've cut this down? It's not... Uh, it's not missing. Some people, they call it half shaft, they'll just cut this out on the back side and just have the, the shaft with the screw part holding the blade in there. Uh, I'm not entirely confident with that and I'm, I'm not making this a, you know, million horsepower, get every last bit out of it. I'm looking for more uh, drivability. It's just drivability, you know, power's great, sure, but uh, we want better throttle response. Throttle response and drivability is worth a million bucks. So uh, that's why I've done this. And then I'm going to bolt it back in. And like I said, you know, you can still see this and this. You know, every hand job is different. Uh, is it perfect? No. But you have to ask yourself, would you rather have a hand job or nothing at all? So uh, we're going to bolt this back onto the car, and uh, w if you do this, uh, make sure you get every speck of metal out of there. Uh, I've got my little brush here, and then I'm going to blow this out too. I'm going to make sure there's not a single little speck of metal getting sucked back into the motor. And let's see here, the tools, you know, we use the carbide burr is the first one. It takes out a lot of material quickly. And I switch to the cartridge roll, just sandpaper. Uh, find the, there we go, that's focused. It's just sandpaper, a spiral, and doesn't remove material as quickly as the carbide burr. And then I switch to the flap wheel here. It's just, once again, sandpaper, which is made into a flap. Makes it pretty smooth. And then for the last little bit, Got a, they call it a cross buff that's made by Dremel. Uh, they wear really, really quickly, but uh, they make a nice little polished finish. You know, you can tell I didn't super polish it because uh, on intakes you don't want it completely smooth anyway. A little bit of uh, roughness around the edge ain't going to kill nobody. And uh, so yeah, we're going to go bolt this back on and uh, take it for a drive. Okay, just about got this done back on there. I uh, just wanted to make a couple of points. The uh, electrical connector, you know, anytime I've got electrical stuff off, uh, dielectric grease is like just the greatest thing. You put a little bit of dielectric grease on each of the contacts and you're never going to have corrosion or poor connections for 20, 40, forever years, you know. A lot of electrical problems are caused by poor connections, you know, rain, just oxidization in general. Dielectric grease on there and you're never going to have that problem. Make sure you just put it on until it clicks and then push that little clip I told you about back in and then that thing's locked on there. And then fasteners. You know these things they weren't that tight when I was taking it off. They don't need to be that tight. They've got a little uh, compression type gasket on the back, a little plastic thing, and uh, you know, it's just not necessary to torque everything down like it's going to hold the whole car together, you know. People just get way too out of control with this stuff. And like everything else you're tightening, kind of do it in a cross pattern, just get it snug down. Don't tighten one bolt all the way and then go around. So then, yeah, once you get them all snug down, just like, you know, that's good. And that's good. That one's good. And good. You know, that's that ain't going nowhere. It doesn't ever need to be any tighter than that. And uh, keep that in mind, any fastener you're working on. Don't over tighten stuff. It's just not necessary. There's very few bolts that are required to be super, super tight. Generally, the smaller the head of the nut, the less torque it requires. 
you know, they, they just build them that way. If it's something really big, well, yeah, it might need some torque. But uh, anything, anything you're working on, regular size stuff, this is 10 millimeter, don't over tighten it. Do yourself and everyone else a favor. Okay, guys, I uh, bolted the throttle body back on, and uh, it was weird. Usually, uh, when you hit the starter, it takes it a couple of turns, boom, 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 boom you know, and then it kicks. It just fired right up, didn't even spin once, and uh, then right when I took off, I thought I noticed a little bit of hesitation. And I was like, kind of weird, uh, but yeah, after a short learning session, I've driven uh, maybe four or five miles at the most, with a run up uh, uh, second and third, you know, up pretty high in the rev range, and now it, it just runs perfect. And in those runs up to second and third, I could definitely feel more boost going on there. So let's start it up and uh, I'll just go for a short drive. <clears throat> and we can see there's uh, no lag in uh, first. Just taking off was when I thought I felt a lag, but uh, just taking off slow even. And yeah, there's nothing. It's fine. Yeah, I've ported throttle bodies on cars, motorcycles, uh, I do cylinder head porting, uh, I've ported a lot of stuff, I've never messed anything up, I always get good gains, uh, so yeah, it seemed kind of weird when I thought there was a hesitation, I just had to learn it, I guess, it uh, didn't take long and now everything's just fine. hesitation to div it did have was like uh, at a, right at a thousand rpms at the most you know super low in the rev range i don't know about the automatic guys uh, i don't know where your car tends to run but uh, i'm never at a thousand rpms even when i'm in high gears you know trying to get good mileage you know. so yeah this was a win uh it all worked out fine and uh definite improvement you know it's just one small part of the induction system but you know you get everything all the pieces tailored uh, towards performance and it just makes a big difference you know uh, those off the shelf you know factory within factory spec pieces they bolt them all together you know you can make improvements on little things like that so don't forget that. Everybody thinks, oh no, and especially in the motorcycle, the sport bike community. They say, well, you know, years ago, 10 years ago, you know, you could make uh, decent gains, you know, doing uh, porting. But uh, these days, you know, they're, they're so good, you can't get anything out of them. And they're just flat wrong, you know. There's always gains to be had. Whether they're huge gains or not, you know, it depends on the manufacturer or the specifics, but uh, there's always gains to be had. I've never failed to see good gains. So I, I guess I've run on long enough. Uh, just uh, give me a like and uh, hit subscribe. I always do fun stuff like this. Thanks for watching.